Hey everyone, hope this video finds you uh, doing well. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick video on PWE. Um, there's a million ways to do it, um, but I'm just going to kind of show you how I do it. Uh, and I've never really had an issue shipping PWE this way. There's going to be tons of people that tell you different ways to do it. None of them are wrong, none of them are right, unless the card does not get there in one piece or does not get there without damage. So, um, and you're going to be able to take what I'm going to show you here and add to it, take away, um, really whatever works for you and the job gets done. So, um, the first thing, show you what you need, um, trip to the dollar store. I spend like maybe six dollars um and i have taped forever um first thing you're gonna want to grab though is gonna be uh they have these packs of thank you cards and these are at like dollar general dollar tree um you're gonna get uh eight thank you cards and eight envelopes now they do have another package that only has six in there doesn't make much sense to grab that one being that these are a dollar plus tax so you can do eight cards. Your envelope is covered. You've got some cardboard for um, strengthening up your, your PWE. So that kind of takes care of that part for you. But look right here and you will see where it says eight. Make sure you don't grab the six ones because they're all the same price. And obviously you don't want to get uh, less packing material for the same price. So you're going to grab you uh, a pack of these. You're going to need uh, painter's tape, which uh, some people like the thinner roll, some people like the fatter roll. I will usually grab one of each. Um, it just depends on, you know, what you like to do with it. I usually grab a thin and a fat roll. I only have a fat roll left right now, so for the purposes of this video, this is what we're going to go with. And this is like, um, I don't know, two, two and a half bucks. Um, the other thing I grab is scotch tape. Yeah, I know you're all clutching your pearls right now, but there's a reason for this scotch tape. It has its time. It has its place. So, um, And don't get the one that says scotch tape on here. You don't need the brand name. They have an off-brand there that's a dollar a roll. does the same job, and uh, it it's cheaper. So, But this is what I have right now, so we're going to go with this. Um the other things that you will need, you have choices. You have your standard top loader, okay? These are great for um, a single card ship or, you know, regular size. Um, they're not that heavy. Um, it's going to give you a lot of protection to send one card. It's easy to um, put into the package that we're going to put it into, and it gives you a little more... Um, protection you can also and I'm going to show you a way to do it you can get away with shipping two cards and using two top loaders and having each one in their own top loader and uh, get there all the same without spending any more money other than the additional top loader so um, this is one option that you have the other option is this is a Beckett grading shield so um, it's wide enough to fit quite a few cards in it um, you can also use it to ship one single card. Um, another uh, alternative to these are the card savers. You don't want the card saver too unless you're only going to ship one card in it because they don't have the uh, correct width. As you can see, this one's a little bit wider. The card saver threes are the ones you're going to want to go with if you want to go with uh, the card saver brand. Um, but they're really, it's six of one half a dozen of the other so they're the same thing so this is another option that you have for these are good for if you want to use one case and you're shipping um multiple uh standard cards um the other options that you will have is and we're going to go through it in a different scenario is going to be shipping thicker cards with a memo, um, how to make sure that this area doesn't get damaged and creased. Um, a lot of times when you get these items PWE, 
they'll come in and you'll see creases around where the material is. What happens is, is that they aren't shipped properly. So they get run through the meter at the post office and that meter squeezes it. And if there's enough area around here between the card and the material, it'll press that card in up against the material and it'll put those ugly creases there and ruin the card. So we're going to uh, go through everything that you can do to prevent that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about before we actually pack anything is stamps, okay? There are, whenever I order stamps for, um, to restock, and I do a lot of PWE shipping, so I, I buy them in books, the, you're going to need three different kind of stamps because they're going to give you so many different options. So basically, no matter what your buyer throws at you, as long as you are, uh, prepared you should be able to handle it pretty well and package it to where you don't give the post office carrier or the person that processes your mail any reason to to damage it um first thing is your your standard forever stamp okay um and these are the dog ones these are awesome when they have these i always get these because they're uh pretty freaking cool um but anyway these are forever stamps they're uh 60 cents a piece. They're good for up to one ounce. Um, I will usually use these for when I'm just shipping one card. Um, and it's not a memo card because I don't have to worry about it getting squashed through the meter. Um, and this is plenty enough postage for one card. Normally a top loader with a standard card packed in uh, these thank you cards here will it'll come out to about 0.7 of an ounce. Uh, maybe 0.8 if the card's a little bit thicker. Um, so these are good for one ounce. Then you have what's called a non-machinable stamp. These sometimes are hard to find at the post office, but you can get them online at USPS.com. These are 99 cents a piece. Um, you can buy them in books. They cover up to two ounces non-machinable, which means that they are not supposed to put it through the machine. Um... So for your thicker envelopes or multiple cards, these are the way to go. Um, if you end up um, doing PWE, PWE for a larger amount of cards, which I don't do, but I know some of you guys do um, provide that. You also have a third kind of stamp that I keep on hand. This is an extra ounce stamp. These are 24 cents a piece. Um, what they do is they allow you an extra ounce in postage. So let's say that I pack eight regular cards in an envelope and it gets pretty thick. A, I don't want it to go through that meter because it's going to damage the cards. Um, whether you think it's going to or not, it's going to dull edges. It's going to do all kinds of things. So I'll throw one of these on there. Or if I'm, uh, <clears throat> you can also use them in combination with the one ounce stamps. If you're, you know, 1.1 1 .1 over, you know, you can use that to uh, make sure that it gets there. So these are good things to have on hand all the time, especially if you do a lot of selling and you do a lot of one and two card selling that are, uh, don't carry a whole lot of value, but you definitely want to make sure that when people that collect teams and stuff buy the cheaper cards, that they get there in one piece and undamaged. So, and this is what you'll get. You'll get eight sets like this in this package, okay? So, if I am shipping one card, what I will do is I'll take my standard top loader put my one card in it okay flip open my thank you card and you don't have to go crazy with packing tape in here uh, painters tape in here just enough to keep it from moving around because uh, if you don't stop the card from moving around what ends up happening is if it gets moved around a lot, the, the envelope as a whole, eventually that top loader is going to come out the side of that card and cut a hole right in the side of your envelope. 
and you could possibly have your card be delivered with half of it hanging out the envelope. So, and I'll always put it just a little bit here. That way that card can't slide out. And then, then you have that. Okay. So, I mean, that's in there. It's not going to move. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to come out of the card. So then I take the card and you can see that this gives it enough to where, I mean, they're really going to have to try and bend this and damage it. Put it into my envelope and then weigh it. And you probably won't be able to see the numbers on this scale. But weighing it there, we are, let's make sure the sucker zeroed out because I've been bumping around my desk here. Okay. And we're at 0.7. So single card, 0.7. So we would use our one ounce forever stamp, okay? Um, little trick for you guys that have um, thermal printers that you're using. Even with a PWE, if you're gonna use stamps, the thermal printer is still um, of use to you. Um, and here's how. You can take the address of whoever you're shipping it to paste it on a, on a text document, paste it on a Word document, and print it right to your thermal printer. It'll print the address nice and neat right here. And then what you can do is, and this has saved me a lot of time because uh, when I have a bunch of PWEs, I don't have to sit there and hand write out the address. I'll put it right here to where my address lines up. This will fold under like so. So I've added another, and it'll help seal the envelope because these envelopes here, sometimes the, the glue on them does not hold so well. Um, and if you're not someone who likes to lick things, um, these are the ones that you have to lick. And even when you lick them, they don't hold very well. So the back of this helps to seal that in and add another layer of protection. So I don't know, just a cool tip, something that, uh, that I do. Um, and then, of course, you put your stamp and your return label or write your return address if you want. So that's basically how to do one single card, okay? Um, I know it's not rocket science, but a lot of people, when they first get into it, they're not sure what's acceptable, what's going to hold up. So just wanted to go through that real quick. Now, going to do multiple regular cards, okay? And like I said, you can take another one. You can put it right here. Run your tape over there in the top and it'll hold both of them. No big deal. You may have to go to a, uh, a two ounce non-machinable stamp or an extra ounce stamp. Um, so that's one card, okay? Now let's say that... Uh, you wanted to do three, four, five, six standard cards. So we're going to do uh, postage for these three cards. So we have options. We can do one in each top and one in, in each top loader. So one two, and then pin this one in between, <clears throat> and then you would tape that in there, like we did before. That holds and that works. The other option, if you're a guy who doesn't want to blow through a bunch of top loaders while you're doing PWE, you take these three. Now, what I'm going to show you, you probably won't see a lot of people do. But this is, if you want to use the one-ounce stamp, is going to go through the meter at the post office. So let's say that you stack them like this, right? And then you put them in here. And then they get a little bit out of whack. Like this, okay? 
Well, when that runs through, you're going to have a fat part here and a thin part here. It is going to, it's going to ding those corners. So what I always do is to keep them lined up with each other. Is I make them all share one sleeve. That way they cannot move around. They can't come apart. They can't get that uneven area where you may take a chance of dinging the corner. So then you just place it in there and you repeat the same steps. The only thing that I will warn you about is that when you take this in there you want to make sure that you seal this part to where it can't slide out just in case your postal worker is a little rough with it because you don't want it to get there and have half the card hanging out and it's not protected and it got dinged but as you can see that cannot move around so same thing we'll put it in our envelope and give it away. So we're at point nine there. So we are good to go for your one ounce standard stamp. Okay, so let's move on to the little bit uh, trickier ones, which are going to be your memo cards because they are thicker. And if you are past, uh, I believe it is, is it an eighth of an inch? Um, you cannot use a standard stamp because if you use a standard stamp, they are going to put it through the meter. And it costs you more to have them not put it through the meter. So they want you to pay a surcharge, which that surcharge is covered by this stamp here, which we went over before is the non-machinable um, two ounce stamp. So let me grab a thicker memo card. Right. So we have this Joe Burrow memo card, okay? And it is considerably thicker than the other. So you're going to want to make sure that they do not run it through the machine. So we're gonna go through our same process. Going to put our memo card in the card. Again, enough tape to make sure that it does not come out of the top loader. and that it is not going to move around or come out of the card and start to cut into the side of the envelope um, because that's bad. I've gotten it before where people have packed them improperly where they're loose inside of the card or they're loose inside of whatever cardboard they use to reinforce it. And the whole time that the letter is being carried, it's just rubbing on these sides. And as it's rubbing through these sides, eventually it cuts it. And what happens is, is in the mail carrier's bag, that card comes loose and you get a nice envelope with a nice thank you card and no card inside because the card has slid out into the mail carrier's bag. So you don't want to do that. So now we will put it in here and now there's a couple of different steps, okay? So let's say that we have printed our label on here. And this is when this label comes in real handy too. So I would put my address there on the front, fold that around the back. And that gives it a nice closing seal. And that's when the dreaded scotch tape comes in. 
on these thicker envelopes, things that tend to happen is these edges here, even if you were to wet this and seal it, get caught on things in the mail carrier bag, or they get caught when they are putting them through slots to separate them, and they rip, okay? In order to stop that, take my scotch tape, and I'll give it a little more oomph. And look, I go above and beyond on a lot of things. So I know some of y'all are going to look at this and go, man, that's a ton of work. But when you get it down to routine, it really isn't. And you're going to be glad because you're not going to have cards where you sold them. And now you've got to refund somebody or you've got to try to find a replacement card for them. Or And, and I've had it happen to me before when I first started where you get somebody who... They don't really want you to fix the problem. They just want to chastise you. I can't believe you did that. Da, 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 da. This will stop all of that. Um, because I run into people all the time where I go, I understand you're upset. But I can't fix the cards. So where would you like me to send the refund? Would you like to go through the ISO store and pick something else? Which it doesn't happen very often anymore. But when I first started. Okay, so... Now that we have that, we don't have to worry about these tabs catching on anything. So that's going to solve that problem, okay? We don't have to worry about getting damage on the memo parts of the card because we are going to put our non-machinable on there. One thing that I always do, because my post office in particular is pretty horrible about recognizing that that's a non-machinable, the address will be here. Down here, I will usually put non-machinable stamp. And I do it in a red marker. And you guys that I've done business with before, you know. Um, so that my butt's covered. So if this goes to the post office and they put it through the machine, then... Uh, the post office just doesn't care, and there's not much that I can do um, about that. So, But anyway, um, the other thing that I will do when they get thicker like this is I will make sure that there's no way it can come out the top or bottom if it comes loose. And look, we've already secured it in there pretty well, so the chances of it coming out the side are, are slim to none, but it doesn't hurt to take the scotch tape and put a little extra on all the seams because if for some reason that seam does split or let's say that the card was really fat and it does split, that card will come out of there and I can tell you that your post office is not going to go look for it. So, And then we'll give it away. So we're at 1.1. I don't have um, any chance of going over two ounces. They won't put it through the machine, so I feel pretty good about that. Um, now, the extra ounce stamps would come in handy as let's say that I was trying to do two memo cards, okay? Um, and of course, let me, you know, clarify, if you're selling a $30 memo card, this is not how you want to ship it. Matter of fact, if somebody asks you to ship it in PWE, just make sure that you tell them up front, look, man, if it doesn't make it there, that's on you. Um, I usually won't do this for anything over $10 to $15. Um, and $15, I'm a little iffy. I'll always ask the uh, customer if that's what they want to do. So, um, anyway... Getting back to what I was talking about, let's say that I was at 1.9. Um, I would put an extra ounce stamp on there only because if my scale is not calibrated like the uh, like the post office scale, then we might be running a risk. So I put that on, on there. But let's say you have a 2.2 ounce envelope. These come in handy because if you don't have these, then you need to either rethink how you're packing it to make it a little lighter 
or you need to go back to your customer and say, hey, look, I know we talked about PWE, but I just don't feel safe with it and it's a little overweight. What do you want to do? Um, and in most cases, your only option is to go back to uh, a bubble mailer with tracking or what you can do is And this is something that sometimes you'll see me do. Let's say that your envelope is getting overly bloated to where you are afraid it's gonna split. These will mail as long as they are under two ounces with this stamp. If you go over two ounces, you can uh, add the extra ounce stamp and it will mail just like a PWE. And actually, this they can't put this through the meter, so you would be A-OK -okay there, so. But anyway, not to make this uh, video 100 years long, but hopefully that helps some of you guys. Um, it may not be as laid out as well as the uh, Twitter post that I made but um, you, most of you guys know how to get a hold of me. You can uh, just hit my DMs if you have questions. You can leave a comment here on YouTube um, if you have questions, and I'll try to answer it. And like I said, there's no 100% right way to do it other than get it there safe um, and make sure that you charge enough to ship it safe. I see a lot of people charge a dollar or 75 cents for PWE and in my mind, you're just not, you're not going to get it there safe. And if you are getting it there safe, in my mind, like I said, I could be wrong, but in my mind, you're, you're paying for some of the shipping. And then if you're selling a $2 card and you're paying $1.50 to ship it and you only charged a dollar, I mean, I, I don't have to be a math whiz to explain that to you. But anyway, um, do me a favor, go check out uh, Buck City Breaks Marketplace uh, and the uh, on the ISO site. Um, I'm going to leave the link in the description there and also the link to my Twitter account in case anybody has questions and wants to uh, ask them there. Um, and hope you guys are having a great day and let me know if you need anything. Bye-bye.